Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Now at 6, relief to help the country rebound from COVID-19. The one hurdle the bill must pass before it can be signed into law. It was the final day for Pope Francis's visit to Iraq, how he spent his final hours to call for peace. Moving forward united under any means necessary, how an annual tradition in the Star City continues the journey of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 10 News at 6. I'm Jessica Jewell. President Joe Biden's COVID-19 relief plan is one step closer to becoming a reality. The $1.9 trillion package passed the Senate along party lines on Saturday. John Lawrence explains the next steps for the bill as it has to clear one more hurdle before reaching the White House. President Joe Biden says the American Rescue Plan will help the U.S. rebound from the COVID-19 pandemic. Everything in this package is designed to relieve the suffering and to meet the most, most urgent needs of the nation and put us in a better position to prevail. The bill had no support from Republicans in the Senate. When people find out what's in this bill, they're going to lose a lot of any enthusiasm they may have for it right now because this was not really about coronavirus in terms of the spending. Uh, this was a liberal wish list of liberal spending. On Tuesday, the House of Representatives votes on whether to approve the Senate's changes to the bill, including the removal of a provision that called for raising the minimum wage to $15 per hour. The conversation is going to turn to how we tackle the minimum wage, and the president is looking forward to working with Congress to determine the best way to do it. If the bill passes through the House, it then goes to the president, who will sign it into law with little to no backing from the GOP. This is the most progressive, the most progressive piece of domestic of legislation in a generation. Mm -hmm. This was never about getting people back to work or kids back to school or the disease behind us. That's where it should have been focused. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The coronavirus continues to spread across the Commonwealth. The Department of Health is reporting more than 1,100 new cases, bringing the total case count to more than 585,000. VDH is also reporting 77 new deaths, 23 from Southwest Virginia. Today marks another day of well more than 2 million Americans receiving the COVID-19 vaccine. On Saturday, the U.S. reached the single day record of 2.9 million shots. According to President Biden's coronavirus task force, that that makes three record breaking days in a row. More than 58 million Americans have now received at least one dose and more than 30 million are now fully vaccinated. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says again today he will not resign. At least five women in the past two weeks have come forward accusing the governor of inappropriate physical and verbal behavior. The New York Attorney General is conducting an independent investigation into the allegations. I'm going to do the job that the people elected me to do. I'm not going to play politics with people who say, well, I think you should resign. That's nice. A growing number of politicians from both sides of the aisle are calling for his resignation. Pope Francis ended the last day of his historic trip to Iraq with mass. Thousands gathered for an open air mass today to honor the Pope's visit. Francis visit, uh, traveled to northern Iraq to encourage those Christians who have remained to persevere, rebuild, and ultimately forgive ISIS militants who committed atrocities across the country. Earlier in the day, Pope Francis released a white dove as a sign of peace in Mosul, a city that suffered widespread destruction in the war against ISIS. Today marks 56 years since Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. led protesters across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama. People in Roanoke honored Bloody Sunday this afternoon at the bridge named after the civil rights leader. 10 News reporter Taj Simmons joins us live there tonight. Taj, what was this group's message? Well, the march to where I am, the Martin Luther King Jr. statue in Roanoke, showed the importance of unity and moving forward by any means necessary. Now, this is a yearly tradition in Roanoke, which shows, excuse me, which actually shows how they're going to move forward with Dr. King's journey. Now, the journey actually took a material form in that march over the bridge that I mentioned. Just as Dr. King marched over the Edwin Pettus Bridge in Selma, his old organization, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, led demonstrators over the Martin Luther King Bridge here in Roanoke. The group saying, we shall overcome in unison as they marched. When they got to the statue, SCLC chapter president Dr. Pernello Chubb Wilson reflected on the fight for civil rights and how much farther there is to go. 
When you talk about civil rights, I don't ever get tired of talking. Because I've been out here 65 years. Ever since 1963, when Martin Luther King was over in Danville, Virginia, and how they treated us over there. Several Roanoke dignitaries joined that march across the bridge, including Mayor Sherman Lee and Vice Mayor Trish White Boyd. I had the opportunity to talk to Dr. Chubb Wilson one on one after everything wrapped up here. Coming up on 10 News at 11, I'll tell you how she thinks Martin Luther King's legacy is still relevant today and how it could move forward even more. For now, reporting live in Roanoke, Taj Simmons, 10 News working for you. President Biden has signed an executive order to expand voting access to mark the 56th anniversary of Bloody Sunday. The president says lawmakers must work to preserve the integrity of the voting process. Every eligible voter should be able to vote and have that vote counted. The order comes after the House passed an election and ethics reform package and as Republican legislatures try to enact more restrictive voting measures. Demonstrators are marching in a silent protest in Minneapolis, calling for justice for George Floyd ahead of former police officer Derek Chauvin's trial. Organizers say the march is to mourn Floyd's death and demand significant policing changes across the country. The silent march is one of many demonstrations in Minneapolis this weekend. Chauvin is charged with second degree murder and second degree manslaughter for Floyd's death last May. Coming up, a rush of donations given right back to the community. How people were able to get free pet food without ever leaving the car. And royal drama brewing ahead of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's first interview since leaving the royal family. Why fans are preparing for shocking reveals. And it has been an unseasonably cool day for us, but we have much warmer temperatures on the way heading into this week. I'll have details coming up next. WSLS 10 News, the proud winner of the 2020 Emmy Award for Best Newscast. Angels of Assisi received a rush of donations this week to refill its empty pet food pantry, and today they started giving that food right back to the community. People with hungry pets drove up to the clinic this afternoon for a free bag of food. They never had to leave their cars. Volunteers loaded the food into their vehicles while they waited. Organizers say they're grateful for so many donations to help pets in need. It's just great to be able to constantly provide help for the community. That is the reason we're here, to keep giving back to the community. And again, we can't do it without the community's support. It's a full circle. 30 families received pet food in the first few minutes of the event. Six Flags America is kicking off its 22nd season this weekend. The measures implemented to keep guests safe. But first, a live look from our Poor Mountain Sky Cam. Take a look at your screen. That is a beautiful sunset we've got taking shape. It's been a pretty chilly weekend, but good news. We've got a big warm up on the way. Delaney tells us when we could hit the 70s this week. Coming up in just a few minutes. As the world awaits Oprah's interview with Meghan and Harry, mixed reactions are coming out of the UK. The Sunday Times claims the Queen won't even watch the interview, which will be airing in more than 60 countries. The anticipation for the interview is high. Like something really going to be said in the interview that we're going to go like, wow, OK, we didn't know that. Even the crown is not going to show us the truth and that could tell us the truth whatever the truth could be. Pretty amazing. Guess we'll see. The interview airs tonight at 8 on CBS. It's a new season for Six Flags America, and it's safety first for this pandemic opening. The park requires face masks and has installed multiple hand sanitizer stations and social distancing markers. Attendance will also be closely monitored. All members, season pass holders, and guests with single-day tickets will be required to make a reservation. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. You're getting a live look from our sky cam over in Lynchburg, seeing yet another beautiful sunset, beautiful colors in the sky, and it was a calm day, sometimes dealing with some breezy winds. From here on out, though, things are going to be much calmer. Satellite and radar looking very quiet at this hour. We're not dealing with any rain. In fact, just a lot of sunshine across much of the eastern U.S., and that is something we're going to hold on to over the next several days. Temperatures are mostly in the 40s still, but we're already starting to see some of those 30s 
towards the Highlands. You're 41 currently in Blacksburg, 48 here in Roanoke after hitting a high right at 50 today and 47 currently in Lynchburg. So it was unseasonably cool today, but here over the next few days it is going to warm up very nicely. Our temperatures by tomorrow morning we will be waking up into the 20s again, so a very cold start like what we dealt with today. But again, from here on out, even our overnight lows are going to be warming up just a little bit. So planning your day for tomorrow, you're definitely going to want that jacket to start. Temperatures starting off in the 20s, warming up to right around freezing, right around 8 a.m. By lunchtime, we're already into the mid 50s, so already warmer than we were today. And then by the afternoon, we'll be reaching into the low 60s. So you just need your sun, uh, your sunglasses and a short sleeve shirt. Things are going to be looking much better. So yes, today was our last day with unseasonably cool temperatures, at least over the next several days. From here, our temperatures are going to be ranging anywhere from about 10 to 20 degrees warmer than average by, say, Tuesday. So that's going to be a nice change for us. In fact, you can see that here, 8 degrees above average tomorrow. From there, 14, 10 degrees warmer than average on Saturday. And then Sunday comes and we will track another cold front that is going to be dropping our temperatures just a little bit, bringing in the potential for some rain. We'll look at that in just a moment, though. We have this high pressure system that's just been hanging out, and that is what's helped to keep our sunshine around. It's going to be calm tomorrow, and it is going to be much warmer. Again, many of us into the 50s and lower 60s. For Tuesday, more of the same. Maybe a little bit more in the way of some cloud cover, but overall, again, just not a bad day. Temperatures are actually going to be in the upper 60s by that point. So I've been talking to some people on social media. Very excited about this grilling forecast. Temperatures will be ranging anywhere from the low 60s to the low 70s through about Wednesday. Even warmer from there. In fact, your seven-day forecast for the New River Valley, you're going to be one of our cooler areas, but you're still seeing the 60s heading over the next few days. We are bringing in that potential for some rain towards the weekend, Friday and Saturday. Overall looking fairly isolated, not looking to stick around for too terribly long, but it's something to keep in mind. Yes, it is just before the weekend, so maybe a little bit of a damper. Temperatures will be cooling back down to the 60s for Southside on Saturday, but I mean 70s three days straight for the Lynchburg area, and then we head into next weekend. 55 still is just not bad. I mean, today today was feeling pretty nice outside when those winds weren't blowing. So, and of course, next Sunday, uh, we spring forward by one hour. Well, we won't pay attention to that no, right now. We're just, just going to ignore that. Yeah, just focus on the 70s. Yeah. I hadn't thought about grilling yet. I didn't, yeah. you know, I wasn't thinking about what I was going to do with oh, yeah. that warmer weather, Absolutely. but grilling is a great idea. It, it is. I was talking to someone. She said she was going to make soup this week and maybe not anymore. No. We're going to do some grilling. No, fire up that grill. <laughs> yes. It's going to be perfect. Thanks, Delaney. <laughs> Tonight on 10 News at 11, an amazing discovery uncovering the Commonwealth's history, how a new construction site led to a treasure trove of historic artifacts. Lord Botetourt's senior running back Hunter Rice has decommitted from Army. The three-star recruit made the announcement via Twitter this afternoon. Before his verbal decision back in August, he had fielded offers from the likes of Liberty, Navy, and VMI, just to name a few. Rice has rushed for over 6,000 career yards, and he's fresh off a seven-touchdown performance this past Friday night against Fleming. Star game, contact tracing, festivities start, or actually just started a few minutes ago on TNT. Nationals release pitcher Jeremy Jeffress for personnel reasons. Bryson DeChambeau wins the Arnold Palmer Invitational, as you just saw before we came on air. Time to cut it out. Spring training, and <laughs> hey, forget the game. Uh, we have a goose fight on the field. Uh -oh. Look at this here. Oh. <laughs> A beak full of feathers, oh. um, perhaps trying to claim some territory oh my gosh. on the baseball field. <laughs> he really field. does. He does. Um, the best part is the reaction. It kind of looks like what? Yeah. Come you at me. What a savage. <laughs> I, I love that we slowed it down, too. I know. Oh, oh, no. That, that's exactly how they packaged that there. It's like, hey, oh he got gosh. a beak full of feathers there. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. All right. Well, Delaney loves this one. A SpongeBob SquarePants inspired pop up restaurant, <laughs> bar, and hotel is coming to Houston. Aye, aye, Captain. There, there you go. go. <laughs> the interactive event is set to feature its own version of the Krusty Krab and Mrs. Puff's boating school. It will also include photo ops and a COVID 19 friendly scavenger hunt. Tickets will be available online. How have, about that? I have so many SpongeBob quotes going through my mind right now. Yeah? Yeah. Give us one. I'm going to call the Krusty Krab in Houston uh -huh. and ask if it's the Krusty Krab, and they're going to say, no, this is Patrick. <laughs>
I don't get it. I really hope I don't people get it. <laughs> People let's are going to love that, though. Weather. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah. temperatures are going to be cold tonight. We're going to be into the 30s already by 9 p.m. I'm sorry. Uh, 36 degrees right around 11. And your seven-day forecast has us warming up very nicely over the coming days. We can ignore the last three days, although it is going to be 74 on Friday. So yeah. that's still awfully nice. That is good news. We said it yesterday. Yes. We deserve this. We have we earned sure it. Absolutely. Can't wait. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you at 11. <laughs>